time to discuss the different types of shares within a company. Now, here we're going to deal with ordinary shares as well as preference shares. And there's a whole bunch of variations on preference shares. There could be cumulative preference shares, participating preference shares, convertible preference shares, redeemable preference shares, or a combination of those. So I could have a cumulative, participating, convertible pref. Okay, so let's quickly understand the one that you'll deal with the most in the study unit, the ordinary share. So here they do not have a fixed dividend. There's not a hundred grand dividend every year, right? Remember that we only pay out ordinary shareholders after preference shareholders have been paid their dividends. Because preference shareholders get preference, right? Dividends, sometimes we still call them distributions, are paid out of available profits. They are recommended by their directors and approved by shareholders. There are no limits to this, but there are some restrictions in terms of regulations. Most importantly, you cannot pay a dividend that will result in the company not being solvent, i.e. assets exceeding liabilities, and liquid, i.e. the company must still have the ability to pay its debts and its bills in an ordinary course of business as they become due, even after the dividends are paid. That's by law put in there so that you cannot just strip the, the business bare and leave no money left behind to pay creditors. This actually comes from our conceptual framework and there's a concept called the capital maintenance concept. The equity of the business, right? The share capital cannot be used to pay the dividends. Profits that have been accumulated must be used to pay dividends to shareholders. Then we have the preference share and preference dividends. So normal preference dividends bear a fixed percentage. So I'll have a 10% preference dividend share. For example, XYZ issues 100 15,000 Rand preference shares that bear a dividend at 10% per annum. So the issued preference share capital, the equity in the statement of financial position will be 100 shares times 15,000 Rand, 1.5 million. Every year, XYZ will pay a preference dividend of 100 shares times 15,000, sorry about the two lines, times 10%, being 150,000, i.e. 1.5 million times 10% gives me 150,000. So these preference dividends must be paid before we're allowed to pay any dividends to the ordinary shareholders. There's a little tweak in this. There could be cumulative preference shares, which basically say, that any preference dividends that are not paid annually will accumulate and the company is obliged to make payment or make good any previously outstanding preference dividends before paying any ordinary dividends. So normal pref shares are just in that year, first pay preference share dividends. Then you can pay ordinary shareholders some dividends. But assume there's not enough money or no profits that you can't even pay pref shares well, it's almost like there's a reset button for the next year, right? That's normal pref shares. But if they are cumulative, then I'd have to first, in the next year, I'd have to first make sure the next year and the previous year's preference dividends are caught up before I can pay any ordinary shareholders a dividend. Then we have our next iteration of this, the redeemable preference share. Redeemable preference share, this means that the company may have the choice or it may be required to buy the preference shares back, i.e. redeem them. The choice of the redemption may be with the company itself or the holders, the buyers of them. This will be depending on the individual preference share agreements. Note later on, we're going to have issues about this redeemable preference share, possibly not being equity but a liability, but for now, assume preference shares are equity in this module. Participating preference shares will not be tested in FAC 1601, but here you'll get a fixed percentage dividends, usually much lower than a normal preference share, but then you will also share in some of the upside and you will participate in a big chunk of the ordinary dividends. So it's a bit of a riskier kind of investment if you invest in participating preps, but with higher risk, there's usually a higher return. Last up, there's convertible preference shares. 
And these are preference shares that may be convertible at a future stage to ordinary shares. Okay? And last up, there may be a combination of any of these above. Any of these may be combined. Okay. And for example, you may have a cumulative redeemable preference share or a non-cumulative convertible participating preference share. All of those will be laid out with a specific set of terms in the agreement. For you, you have ordinary shares and preference shares. Okay. Look out for any other funny wording, but most of the work you'll do is going to be in ordinary shares. I don't want you to get it bogged down too deep in this detail. It's there to set you up for second year mainly. Thank you.